Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, everybody, and a big thank you to dear Dr. Bansi and the entire team of Diacon. Uh, so my two uh, colleagues have already started the session and spoken about the newer generation insulins. I am going to take you a bit back in time again and uh, going to back to the basics a bit because I am going to talk to you about mainly about the basal insulin optimization and moving towards a more patient-centric approach, particularly in India. So we know that type 2 diabetes is a progressive disease and over a period of time patients from starting off with lifestyle, starting off with medi oral medications ultimately reach a stage where they require insulin at a given point of time. The problem again comes because even after taking insulin we see a considerable amount of people remaining at an uncontrolled state. The average HbA1c at the time of initiation of insulin in our country is somewhere around 9 or 9.5. The average duration of years after patient starts insulin is somewhere around almost more than seven years remaining uncontrolled on two or three drugs. So the problem here comes is that there are, there are gaps at multiple places. There is no clear cut guidelines particularly in India which talks about the ideal way to start insulin, the ideal dose, the ideal titration methods and the way to go about in intensification. And that's where the problem lies because we remain at a higher level or we remain at an uncontrolled state for a longer period of time. So this is an overview of my talk where we are going to talk initially about the how, why and when or of uh, insulin initiation or uh, how to start. Going on to the reality of titration inertia and how it exists which is the best possible way to overcome this titration inertia particularly choosing algorithms which are more simplified and more easier and addressing the unmet need of titration algorithm complexities and going on to a basal plus concept also which can play a role particularly to simplify the therapy for patients with diabetes. So let us first understand the how of basal insulin initiation in diabetes management. Again as I told you there is no clear cut guidelines which tells us exactly how to start but we need a way which is simple. We need a way which the patient can understand or comprehend easily. If you just tell a patient to start off with a very large dose and does not know further what to do for a month, it becomes difficult for these patients to continue a th therapy also. The simple way to start off a basal insulin is what has been recommended ideally is either in, you decide in terms of your body weight or in, and you decide in terms of unit per kilogram. So if the person's body weight is somewhere uh, less than is around 60 kgs, if his A1C is less than 8 and then you can start off with around 0.2 unit per kg and if the A1C is more than 8 percent the recommendation is to start somewhere around 0.3 unit per kg and subsequently according to the weight the dosage of insulin will keep on changing. Two important uh, uh, bodies had uh, endorsed these views of insulin initiation, particularly in Indian patients. The one is the BE smart expert opinion and the second is the Delphi expert opinion. Both more or less recommends that the basal insulin regimen, which is the most widely recommended insulin regimen all over the world to start off with. You can start off with around 0.1 to 0.2 unit per kg, depending on the degree of hyperglycemia. And overall, the Delphi expert opinion also says that 8 to 12 units is the ideal way to start off. If you think of patient is at more risk of hypoglycemia as it's like a, a more or less elderly patient or more chances of getting hypoglycemia, you can also start off with a lesser dosage of 4 to 6 units per se. And then ask the patients to follow up at around at least 2 weeks after initiation for assessing the need for titration or to intensify the therapy further. Now let us understand the why and how of basal insulin titration. Let us under, the, the fact is that titration inertia exists. The fact is that titration is a problem. The best possible time to titrate the dose is the first 12 weeks of after you start insulin therapy is what has been recommended all over. That from the time of initiation to up to 12 weeks is where the time when the maximum change in fasting sugar and the change in HbA1c is recorded if you, if you titrate the dose as well. 85 to 90 percent of the type 2 diabetic patients using insulin and oral drugs and almost 80 percent of the patients who are using insulin are still not at a target even after you start insulin. It could be because of the progressive nature of the disease, it could be because of the comorbidities, the, but the fact is that the titration which does not happen, the intensification does not happen is also one of the major cause for this. This is an interesting data which looks at, it was an interesting study, it is a sub-analysis done from a study called ALOHA study. They grouped people into uh, four different categories, it targeted, it uh, mainly looked at the assessment of change in fasting sugar and HbA1c in four different groups. 
वन ऑफ द ग्रुप वॉज वेर पेशेंट्स हैड एन इवन सी ऑफ लेस देन सेवन विथ द टोटल यूनिट ऑफ इंसुलिन दैट वॉज स्टार्टेड वॉज लेस देन एट पॉइंट फाइव यूनिट्स द सेकेंड ग्रुप वॉज वेर द इंसुलिन रिक्वायरमेंट वॉज मोर देन एट पॉइंट फाइव यूनिट्स टू बिगिन विथ एंड द इवन सी रिमेन एट लेस देन सेवन The third was where even C was uncontrolled above seven, and the dosage started was less than eight point five. And the fourth was when they again there was more than seven, and the dosage started was eight point more than eight point five. The maximum change in sugar, the maximum change in fasting sugar and HB even C that was noted was in the group two. That means those patients where the dosage was initially that was started was more than eight point five, and the even C maintained less than seven showed the maximum drop in even C showed the maximum drop in fasting sugar. What it tells us is that it is necessary to start off a patient on an adequate dosage, not very less maybe, and necessary to monitor them over a period of time. That which gives us the desired effect much more earlier. The key problems regarding titration is that we do not again have proper guidelines. There are problems associated with the healthcare physicians as well as the patient to basically accept insulin therapy. This was an online survey done to determine uh, the how the acceptance is related to insulin initiation and titration. Interestingly, in this, 75% of the physicians said that they did speak about insulin initiation or titration or intensification to the patient in the first visit itself. But only 16 to 20% of the patients actually could record that they or remembered that they were told about this. What it tells us is that most of the time patients are not aware enough what they need to do after starting insulin. We in our clinic start insulin, give them a prescription, we teach them maybe, but we do not talk to them further about what needs to be done in the subsequent four to six weeks over a period of time. <clears throat> This is again a data from the NAN study. NAN study here compared patients who were in the uh, from 2007 to 10 versus those with the same data in 1994 to 1998. There was an improvement in terms of blood sugar control. There was an improvement overall, 50% reduction, almost or 51% reduction in number of patients who could uh, who achieved the good HbA1c. But the fact was that still there was almost 49 to 50% of the patients who remained at an uncontrolled state in spite of getting the best possible therapy or in spite of being on insulin also at a given point of time. This is an Indian survey. The IDMPS Wave Seven data subgroup analysis again looked at number of causes which were responsible for poor glycemic control, lack of titration of insulin, and the fear of hypoglycemia were the main two contributory factors here again, which showed that why patients remained uncontrolled in spite of being on good therapy or insulin therapy. Patient reluctance, unwillingness to consider basal insulin treatment, patients' non-adherence to existing medication regimens, inability to self-monitor blood glucose properly or at a given frequency what is recommended are the other reasons which are commonly there why because of which patients don't titrate or patients don't uh, follow the insulin therapy properly. So titration inertia is definitely a reality. It is there between us, and we are the ones who need to. and does overcome this inertia by talking to our patients more and more and making them understand what needs to be done progression of type 2 diabetes and increased comorbidities is again one of the cause despite the use of insulin therapy larger studies have shown that in clinical practice the desired glycemic control is not reached and suboptimal dose titration is mainly a key barrier in order to achieve or desired glycemic control in terms of healthcare physicians the reluctance by us to talk to the patients regarding this the fear of weight gain the fear of hypoglycemia the fear that it may have an impact on the quality of life are all the factors which are there in the minds of the patients as well as doctors who are treating this enough flexibility is not there sometimes in the kind of regimens we are using complex titration algorithms if we teach our same patients from the very first day it becomes difficult for them for a patient whom we are starting maybe on two to insulin twice a day or a basal bolus and if you start teaching them adjusting all the doses from the very first day they are not going to grasp them that easily and it becomes a problem to follow up over a period of time and of course lack of self monitoring of blood, blood, blood glucose is again an important area smbg is sometimes not spoken about enough in our opd practice all patients on insulin needs to be on smbg that is a golden rule and we need to talk to them when you start insulin we need to again tell them the importance of smbg and why they need to do again and again if they are taking insulin the other area which is again of concern is hypoglycemia as my co speakers have already shown the how the newer in generation insulins are safer though they reach the desired glycemic control may be in the same way but the the incidence of hypoglycemia is much lesser when it comes to these generation newer insulins 
so the need to address this need of hypoglycemia is an important area if you understand that hypoglycemia is a factor which is a deterrent factor to achieve the desired control one episode of hypoglycemia actually pushes a patient back and much demotivates him to control his blood sugars much well this is again an interesting data where they looked at patients compared patients who had an episode of severe hypoglycemia uh, uh, from a survey done through a questionnaire interestingly in this uh, survey they uh, they found out that type 1 diabetic patients actually had more incidence or or more fear of hypoglycemia for mild to moderate but when they looked at severe hypoglycemia they found out that type 2 diabetic patients in fact had more than 80% for fear of hypoglycemia as compared to 60% in type 1 it tells us the importance of severe hypoglycemia and how it demotivates or pushes a person back so the fear of hypoglycemia needs to be overcome there is a decrease for the tight glycemic control poor adherence of therapy reduced willingness to intensify therapy and overall compliance and adherence does go down when a patient goes into an episode of hypoglycemia it also leads to intermittent snacking it also leads to weight gain which are all the factors which can again deteriorate our glycemic control two important studies again done here they where they have compared basal insulin versus premix insulin to look at the incidence of hypoglycemia one of the study here had uh, patients on cetagliptin and other uh, was given glargine versus compared to premix insulin twice a day more or less the glycemic control was more or less similar in both the arms but the uh, risk of hypoglycemia was almost 4.5 times higher in the premix twice a day regimen as compared to the glargine regimen the number of patients reaching uh, hb1c less than 7 again was similar but the incidence of overall hypoglycemia symptomatic hypoglycemia and nocturnal hypoglycemia all were much lesser in the glargine arm as compared to the premix arm this is a head to head comparison again of basal insulin versus idecaps again showed in one of the earlier presentations here again uh, this is a comparison between glargine 100 versus idecaps in terms of efficacy both were found to be similar idecaps was non inferior to glargine here but in terms of hypoglycemia there was an 86% higher overall uh, rate of confirmed hypoglycemia with idecaps as compared to glargine 100 year so when we talk about titration algorithms it is important that we make these algorithms also much easier for our patients to understand there have been some studies which have been done in the past like insight and landmat and t2 target they again all achieved the desired glycemic control they make these were studies where the target of glycemic controls were much lesser they tried to aim for a fasting sugar of somewhere between 70 to 90 they did achieve that but it did result in a higher incidence of hypoglycemia and some amount of weight gain so we need to under again understand that our patients need something much more simpler if you look at data from atlantis and goal a1c studies atlantis was a study where they looked at two different algorithms one was a patient centric algorithm where the patients used to self titrate the dose and one was a physician induced algorithm where the physician used to call the patients weekly or two weekly and titrate the dose and interestingly here the the arm where the patients did the self titration they could achieve the hb1c much better they achieved the fasting blood glucose much lesser and the incidence of hypoglycemia was also much lesser what it tells us is that if you teach the patients well if you motivate them well give them simple algorithms simple targets to begin with we can achieve the control in a much smoother and a better way with a simpler and a safer insulin this is one of the indian consensus which came out related to titration where it gives a simplified approach depending on the blood sugar or fasting blood sugar level give them a target level of say between 80 to 130 anything going above 130 to 160 a 2 point a 2 unit dose increment or anything lesser than 80 will give a minus 2 units of uh, uh, insulin uh, which is becomes much more easier titrate insulin based on the average of three most recent readings and increase the dose once or twice a week if fasting is above the target there are problems in specifically to our country also there are barriers to a, for a patient to accept insulin there are barriers to accept the disease low levels of awareness among both patients and physicians is there constraint on patient time and resources the cost becomes a problem sometimes low rate of adherence to therapy is there of course there are other uh, therapies which are educated which are given to the patients they uh, they keep on learning this from other sources and ultimately sometimes they drop out insulins also so importance of smbg needs to be taught to the patients highlighted to them make them understand why it is important to do blood tests regularly 
there should be a, there is a lack of structured patient education and support programs which needs to be more uh, aggressively done and uh, made the, the patients aware about education we need to encourage our patients better for adherence to insulin therapy and support programs and several trials have clearly shown that if we can titrate our insulin regimens better will be it will be more effective over a period of time so going on further from basal insulins i'm going on to a, a one step further uh, there comes a point of time where we know that a basal insulin might not be sufficient enough a patient's blood sugar levels may are still maybe may or will not be at a control the evc might not be at target in spite of taking maybe around 30 units of insulin or more than 0.5 unit per kg per day so that is the time we need to understand that we need to move on from one basal insulin to maybe a uh, we need to go to further what has been recommended again is there are the clinically we know that it has been recommended that we can either go to a premix insulin twice a day we can go to a basal bolus regimen or we find a way somewhere in between a premix twice a day we know that works well but it does make a patient push into hypoglycemia at some point of time the chances of weight gain are sometimes more and it needs more flex it is it is a very rigid uh, regimen per se patient needs to be more, cannot be very flexible in terms of his routine when it goes to basal bolus it is something which the patient should be motivated enough to take four doses a day though it is the best way by which you can control the blood sugars but the motivation and adherence needs to be there so basal plus is a regimen which is also recommended by Asso american diabetes associations and other associations it is where we add a single dose of base, uh, rapid acting insulin with the largest meal of the day mainly to cor correct the postprandial surge that is happening and uh, we continue with the basal insulin at night time uh, uh, after dinner what it does is that when we are trying to blunt the postprandial peak that is happening with the largest meal of the day with a shorter acting insulin it overall helps to blunt the in surge in blood sugar that happens following the larger meal and thereby leading to a better glycemic control this is an interesting study which was done called the proof of concept study where they looked at initiating insulin glucin as a uh, single dose initiated with the largest meal of the day and uh, the patients were first given basal insulin for the first 3 months and then added glucin for the next subsequent 3 months the uh, for patients who were uncontrolled even uh, remained at an a1c above 7 in spite of being on basal insulin what it showed was that uh at the end of the study those patients where addition of glucin was done there was a definitely an improved glycemic control more number of patient achieved an a1c of less than 7 and there was no for, uh, increase of hypoglycemia or weight gain seen in either groups or even in the patients where glucin was added so meal time insulin may begin uh, or could be an easier way to start off when we are in thinking of intensifying therapy from one insulin to other a small dose of 4 to 6 units can be started off with or depending on the blood sugar postprandial blood sugar level and uh, a smaller dose of 0.05 to 1 unit per kg can be uh, overall uh, started off with last slide please so to end my talk uh, titration inertia is there and it does exist due to a fear of hypoglycemia and weight gain which leads to inadequate insulin up titration and poor glycemic control a patient friendly dose up titration strategies is needed some with the basal insulins which helps us to achieve the desired glycemic goal simplicity and convenience of once daily regimens with basal allows the patient um, better empowerment for effective insulin dose management in insulin settings progressive nature of diabetes may result in subsequent intensification of insulin treatment to achieve the desired goal a rapid acting and a long acting analog per se mimics the endogenous postprandial blood sugar uh, insulin secretion and helps us to control the postprandial surge as well as the fasting blood sugar better and a step wise intensification with glycine with a single injection of glucin can be considered as one of the therapies in clinical practice thank you very much